subscribe ecofan for more educational videos welcome learners today we are going to discuss about the role of citizen science in environment protection i am dr fayaz ahmed citizen science is a science for everyone the term citizen science also known as community science or crowd science or crowd source science or civic science or participatory monitoring and voluntary uh, monitoring refers to research in which members of general public or sometime called non professional or amateur uh, who people who take part in the research varied people and groups have different ideas on what citizen science entails therefore it's difficult to agree on single definitive definition in spite of the widespread use of citizen science the majority of published studies on the topic have come from the field of biology and conservation participation in research as a citizen scientist can serve a variety of purposes volunteers from the general public help with data collection classification through the process known as citizen science which strengthens the abilities of scientists overall especially citizen science is when the public voluntarily helps conducting uh, scientific research the citizen scientist may design experiment collect data and uh, data analyze results and solve the problems moreover communities can take the lead in citizen science by establishing programs to study local environmental and health risks the public's understanding of the scientific method and their exposure to new ideas are both enhanced by involvement in citizen science projects to achieve this goal some educational institution incorporate citizen science projects into their curriculum to my knowledge the term citizen science was first used in january 1989 issue of mit technology review which highlights the work of three community based lab examining the environmental challenges there have been more options for funding publishing and completion of citizen scientific initiatives in the 21st century increased use of science in is a trend facilitated by technology uh, department now we will discuss in detail how the citizen science can be used in environment and ecological services so serious and increasing frequent environmental concerns in the mid 20th century igniting the beginning of environmental science as a profession as the profession has grown so too has to need for more data and the number of scientists required to collect and analyze these data the impact these data and the narratives that come accompany them can have uh, on policy and behavioral change has also subsequently grown with environment health playing an ever increasing role in decisions and debate from global level to national level to community and to the individual level with the increase in available technology science become even more accessible to both scientists and non specialist citizen alike we can all learn about fascinating uh, fascinating and important updates across the scientific world right from our smartphones we can interact with scientific community through social media we can contribute to science right from comfort of our living rooms in a citizen science citizen science allows everyone regardless of training or academic background to engage with scientific projects both in collecting and analyzing data so with the example of the citizen science in environment and ecological services there have been six stages so six interactive stages of designing and implementing citizen science project for identifying the need or 
the problem to evaluating project uh, and focusing on the field of environment science and ecology. The project teams should be action oriented while designing and implementing the uh, citizen science initiatives. The first stage of the citizen science project life cycle is identifying the need or problem in which need or problem that the project is aiming to address is identified and the boundaries are defined depending on the purpose and the type of project the problem or need can be identified by scientists participants uh, other stakeholders or all of them together based on the models of public participation in scientific research and levels of participation at this stage it is useful to think about the key stakeholders and try to understand the problem from their perspective particularly stakeholders from target groups possible solutions to problem and their limitations need to be considered and research questions and general objectives should be formulated with reference to those solutions and limitations acknowledging the stakeholders may not have identified a specific problem or research question as uh, is sometimes the case in ecological and environmental studies but instead may have noted the need of baseline monitoring can help to guide the work Additionally, it is important to have an overview of similar projects and available methods that could be useful for project. Within the rapid growing citizen science field and literature, it is likely that similar problems and needs have already been addressed through other initiatives. Some early considerations on the evaluation and sustainability of the project are also helpful in framing overall idea and establishing the sound basis of the upcoming stages the second stage it is an important to recognize that not all research projects can be addressed with the citizen science approach this stage is about ensuring the citizen science is the right approach to address the problem and research questions identified in the first stage the goal is to understand whether involving the citizen science participation will help to achieve the desired results while at the same time benefiting participants by addressing their needs or fostering new skills and expertise if both the, uh, those conditions can be met then citizen science approach are likely to be appropriate for the project now the stage three is designed uh, the overall aims and objectives of the project need to be clearly defined in close collaboration with the prospective uh, with prospective participants for example advocating for a policy change or collecting data to answer a scientific question or a combination of both can be the motive motivation for designing a citizen science project in many cases practic uh, pra uh, practitioners may want to achieve additional outcome that are beyond the intended results of the project such as social learning behavioral change or raised interest in science and community building such outcomes should be determined defining the project objectives in detail it uh, detail will help to identify the data needs and data collection tools and form formats which could be a smartphone app or data sheet among others how these data should be collected individually or in a team with a prior training or without also depends on the project aims and objectives now the stage four is the developing a community building plan for the project for successful community building knowing the community and understanding their motivations for contributing time and skills for the projects are important identifying age group education level and interests of the community members among their form formation help in getting 
to know the community. Motivation of participants can vary across the community members and may include contributing to science generally and help the environment, getting to know others with similar interests or gaining skills. There is vast literature on what motivates participants to join a citizen science project which can provide insight and guidance. At this stage, it is important to consider ways to engage the community. This may lead, uh, this may be done online or through the in-person workshop meeting depending on the type of project and number of participants. In many cases, explicitly identifying the role of citizen science enablers will also help to ensure success. Citizen science enablers are facilitators or third parties who can often bring skills and expertise in facilitation and communication in general public or across the community or to funding. Now the stage five at the stage highlights the progress process and steps related to data management, which may apply uh, to research projects. However, aspects presenting here reflect the peculiarities of the citizen science projects. These steps are not necessarily taken in sequential order. Some may take place simultaneously while others occur more than once. The steps related to planning, collection, assuring or, present and, or presenting in the section, whereas steps involved in analyzing, describing, preserving, integrating are discussed in subsequent sections. First one is planning. In this step, a data management plan linked to the project design stage should be prepared considering requirements such as laws and regulation regarding data privacy and ownership and policy relevant to data access and sharing. Additionally, it is crucial uh, to define ethical project practices such as how to attribute uh, contributors while at the same time ensuring privacy and documenting them through clear set of terms of use of privacy policy for project including which data will be shared and how. It is also important to consider the sustainability of the data management to identify the associated costs and to ensure the resources are available to achieve successful data management. The collection or is the second step uh, refers to the type of information needed to achieve the objectives of the project. This could be the project related information such as, uh, such as observations of plants, trees, animals as well as their location and number or additional information such as name, location, email address and participants to ensure the proper acknowledgement of participant contributions or data quality. In ecology and environment projects of contributory type, data are mainly gathered using sensors, special equipment, standard protocol or opportunistically where no standards or sample methods are used or through combination of methods. Now the assuring, the assurance step involves assure, ensuring the quality of data gathered as a part of project. Data quality is related to its fitness for the purpose, which means that data are sound enough to be used to intended uh, used for its intended purpose. Data quality can be assured through quality assurance process, which are implemented through uh, before or during data collection and quality control process and the, the last stage is evaluation and that is essential step any project uh, including citizen science uh, there are various ways of evaluation such as front-end evaluation or gathering baseline information formative evaluation conducting during implementation uh, and summative evaluation usually implemented at the end of project to identify its effectiveness. The best method of evaluation depends on the project, but it is recommended to consider evaluation as an ongoing effort allowing uh, improvement at any stage. In some cases, evaluation can be funder requirement 
along with identifying the short term and long term impacts of the project. Agreeing on metrics for measuring success and for emerging a future potential is a key to successful citizen science project. New approaches to evaluation in citizen science projects are focusing on the individual impact dimensions that is in collaborative participant, uh, with participants and the socio-ecological benefits both worth considering when designing the evaluation methodology. This was all about the citizen science in environment and ecological service. I hope you all enjoy the lecture. Thank you.